Hi, Greg Perry, the Historic Preservationist. Welcome to the uh, Conservation Studio. Um, we have a clock here that's fallen over. It's fallen over because it had glue failure. Falls over, hood tumbles off to the ground, movement comes out, dial breaks, the dial feet break off, uh, just a mess. I've got the dial squared away now, the dial actually bent, the, some of the post hold, the, the five posted movement on the eight day um, bell strike movement from England. Uh, that bent, so it was a menagerie of putting everything back to, to order. So that's done. But now dealing with the case. Um, the case has gone under, undergone a total, total glue failure, adhesive failure. And you can tell by this coming down here, this crack. So I think we can pull this in. We're going to give it a shot. That has to be taken care of. So, you know, this what happened a lot of, with these clocks, um, stylistic changes over the years, people got bored. And you would have itinerant carvers, like we would have uh, itinerant uh, finishers coming around, and uh, or itinerant painters. The finishers would come, two or three of them, and maybe one family. It pulls up to a uh, 1710, 1720. They come into your town. They say, hey, can we sleep in your barn for a few days? And we'll, we'll go over and we'll polish all your furniture. So what do they do? They go in, they put French polish or shellac on all the pieces, and then maybe they have a wax with them or something like that, a beeswax. They go over it. And so I uh, had a conversation the other night. So they are building patina. They are building patina. So what is patina? So you have a basic wood, you have a basic coloration over the wood, and then you have a finish out of the factory, so to speak, off the bench, not out of the factory, but off the bench when the original craftsman made it. So the, you have this original finish. So it starts getting jaded by light, oxidation by light. The finish starts going opaque. The finish goes dark and it changes all the light refractions as you're going through the finish, clear finish, hitting the wood, ricocheting back to your eye. That's all being diffused and broken, making you opaque. There's a lot of things going on as the finish deteriorates from too much sunlight, from too much heat, from too much cold. All this fracturing is happening. So that's one item. The other item is happening in the case of, of a finish is that the environmental impact inside. You have a ton of dust all the time. I mean, you, you could have had a wood floor, you could have a, a dirt floor, you could have a brick floor. People are opening the doors. All this stuff blows in, gets on the piece. So what are these itinerant finishers? What did they do? They came in. I'm sure they weren't in there and just swabbing this piece down. But let's also don't forget the, the carbon buildup and the oil buildup from cooking. So you have this cloth was so important, it would have been in the main room of the in the period and you had little molecules of oil floating around when they're cooking and and then you have some carbon and it all lands on the finish it gets into these micro fissures and helps darken and make it more opaque so what do these itinerant finishers do they come in and they put a coat of shellac on it so they lock in all that environmental dirt all that in, in that fracturing that's occurring by oxidation in the sun they lock it in they wax it they come back next year, two years later, the same itinerant guys. They go over the whole house with all the pieces. It's happened here in Alloway's town back in the, the, eight, the, the 1750s all the way up into the 1940s. There was a, a group, a lineage, a family that would go around and do this. So, and if it happened here, it happened all over the world, particularly in England and France and Germany and Italy. So, uh, so it's not, uh, not new. So when you look at a micro photograph, a cross section of a micro photograph, you're looking at layers of patina, layers of finish that people have put on, and they, they kind of refuse to clean it up. I mean, I can't imagine everybody coming in cleaning up 20 pieces of furniture in a well-to-do colonial homestead. I can't imagine that. So what are they doing? They're putting something on here. There's all low light in here, and it, it spruces it up. It gives it a nice warm sheen. They wax it, and everybody's happy. But this finish would eventually change, finish, evolve over 100, 150, 200 years. So... Sometimes you would have got to a finish that was so dark leading up to this that people would say, you know what? I've kind of had it with that dark piece. Maybe we can do something. Let's, let's call a carver. So then there became the itinerant carvers in the late 18th century, in, in not so much in America, but more so in London and France, or in, in England in general, but more so in London. But they would come around and they said, well, you got this old tall case clock. I think what I want to do is, you know, let's spruce it up like, three design generations, you know, so just suppose it was William and Mary, let's get it up to a George III, just being facetious here, but so the guy would maybe have free reign, maybe the owners of the clock would come in and say, look, I want certain motifs carved here and here and here on the clock, I've seen them somewhere, 
I see them in a friend's house in London. That's how it may go. Or the carver may have free, the carver sculptor may have free reign to come in and do what he wants with this piece. So, so this is an overcarved case. Once a very plain Jane, and it ends up being um, almost uh, almost a sampler, like you know, young girls used to do samplers as they edged into woman womanhood, and they put their initials in, and it it taught them how to do weavings and. and knitting and things like that, so they do a sampler. So this was almost a sampler with the carver's footprint or fingerprints on it, so very interesting stuff. But anyway, long story short, we're back and we have glue failure happening here. And uh, let's see what we can do to get this guy open. There we go. We have an 18th century magnet here, look at that. Isn't that nice? That's, it's, it's very rare stuff. So, so the 18th century magnet kidding is gonna go. Um, you can see where someone's tried to salvage this crack in the door before, probably because the door warped. So we have a three-piece door here. Um, this is splined, this little arch, and then we have the two vertical pieces. So someone has cut what amounts to or just dadoed out and put these strips and probably, you know, moisturized this door and flattened it down. And now this is actually starting to give way. So all this, everything is failing as far as the glue. But a lot of times with these clocks, what happens, and I think why this clock tumbled, is the backboards. If this had a two-piece backboard here, and that's why we have all our clamps here. You know, the clamps are here because I glued the crack all the way down. This clock was all over the place, racking severely, and now it's solid because just that glue joint down the back. So I, I believe that when the glue joint vertically dried out totally, you know, somebody was walking by the clock and there it goes and she just gave away. So, um, you know, so a simple thing. So, so we got this guy remedy. We're gonna work on the door, work on those, those splines and the dados and, and get that straight. And there's, there's a lot of, um, you know, we wanna we keep the dark finish on this. It's kind of giving you that fumed oak look, which is not fumed oak, but I think they were trying to achieve something like that. Something from the Jesse the Jacobean era. Um, so we want to get rid of that totally. And not get rid of it, but we need to fill in where it's it's taken a hit over the years and, and people have really abused this piece. So um, and the hood, the hood is back together. The hood came off, was a total case, came apart in about 50 pieces. Um, it's taken the better part of a week to get that back together. So our last part here is the case, the movement's ready. And uh, hopefully by our next uh, video on this, we'll amalgamate the whole piece together. So Greg Perry, the Historic Preservation, is signing out.